a D&D party that has the worst case of player versus DM mentality, and a problem player that knows they're the problem. This is Taylor's Tavern Tales, and let's get into the RPG Reddit Horror Stories. The players want to limit the DM influence. So this is something that has never really happened to me before. I've been DMing for a while, not extremely experienced or anything, but I've been running a few games. A few weeks ago, I started talking to someone I know, and they mentioned they had a group of friends that were looking for a DM, and asked if I could do it. Since I really like D&D, I didn't think twice and said, sure. I met this group for a session zero of sorts to discuss what they were looking for in a game. Here's what they told me. They wanted someone to run Curse of Strahd for them, which is fine, that is one of my favorite modules, but that's where problems came up. I told them I'd be happy to, as Curse of Strahd actually has a lot of variables and ways to make things interesting. That's when a player stopped me mid-sentence and said, Before you start, I want to make sure you're running it for us without change. I want you to not influence the module at all. Don't even change a comma. I hate when DMs think that they know better than the folks at D&D. &D. That was strange, to say the least, but I understand wanting to run something as it was intended, and I said I would definitely follow the module. However, the player continued. No, you shouldn't even use dialogue that isn't in the module, okay? That's how D&D &D is meant to be played. Also, you need to roll dice out in the open for us to see. Things felt very strange to me. I know I'm not experienced or anything, but this didn't feel normal. So I asked them plainly what they expected of me. And this one player who seemed to be speaking for the group said, We hate when DMs abuse their powers to manipulate the world. That's why we only play modules and make sure the DMs don't change a single thing from them. I imagine my expression didn't seem too good when he said that, because what followed were a bunch of complaints about DMs, and for me, it sounded way too close to player versus DM mentality. It went on for a while, but there was no way I was DMing for them. I'm barely experienced enough to deal with normal players, and to me, this definitely isn't normal. Honestly, at that point, they were expecting me to be an AI simulator for their game with a voice, which is not what I'm looking for, and that we weren't going to be a good fit. As expected, they didn't like my response, and started to angrily shout that I was wasting their time, and that I wasn't a true DM, etc. That being said, I will no longer be DMing for this group, or for anyone that this friend of mine introduces me to. I'm just glad it didn't go beyond session zero. Absolute insanity. I mean, sure, if you want the module to be run exactly how it's supposed to be, exactly how it's written, sure, that's fine. But geez, that does not sound like the case for this. It really does sound like player versus DM mentality, for sure. At that point, like OP said, why not just get AI to do it? In fact, why don't all of you just sit around the book and read it? Because it kind of sounds like that's what they want. These players need to get off their high horse because there is no true way to DM and there's no true way to play D&D. It's all subjective. Oh, and the rolling the dice out in the open? Yeah, maybe for like dramatic roles and stuff, but there are some roles that need to be hidden from the players. That's just kind of crazy. I think OP definitely did dodge a bullet with this one, because that sounds like a whole group of problem players to me. Congratulations, you're not in this group. Well, I think I'm gonna move on to the next one. What a silly goose. My first experience as a player resulted in ghosting. This is being posted on a throwaway account, mostly because I'd rather not have these kinds of posts associated with my main account, and partly to keep myself anonymous. I'll be honest and say that I'm not sure if this counts as a real horror story, but I did at least want to get this out here, since it did kind of scare me off a bit from doing more TTRPGs. It'll be a short story though. It was around a few months ago now. I was invited from a public server from a well-known r slash RPG Horror Stories YouTube reader to join in an Aliens franchise TTRPG. To note, none of the players are bad players, or people in general. All of them treated me well enough. The players were all given pre-existing characters to play as, most likely based on a character from the Aliens Extended Universe. I don't remember the name of the character, but she was described as brash, loud, I believe sarcastic. Forgive me, the campaign lasted only a single session for me, so the details are vague. Now, I don't mind playing pre-existing characters. After all, I've played 
enough video games where characters are already made exactly how they need to be. But the issue was mainly that this character was the exact opposite of me. I'm generally a quiet person who tends to be a more of a background person. I hate being the center of attention that much. I just don't feel like I was playing this character right and felt bad for not doing much contribution wise. We ended the first and only session for me on a post fight scene after a close encounter with a couple of xenomorphs. After the session, I won't really sugarcoat it. I made the mistake that I really hate myself for to this very day. I ghosted the group. I never came back. I never said how I felt about the campaign. I just left. I ended up becoming the problem player in this story, all because my dumb A just didn't know how to articulate my feelings. I guess I was hoping for a more standard TTRPG where I could play a character that I feel more comfortable playing, but I never stated that to the GM. Out of shyness? Out of fear of disappointing them? Either way, it's my fault, and I hold myself accountable for not making my feelings known. If the group happens upon this post and knows of a player that never showed back up in session one, I want to apologize for ghosting you all. It was nothing personal, and I should have been more honest. Hope you guys have a great campaign without me, and maybe I'll find a game for me out there. Yeah, I mean, OP, you knew that you were in the wrong here. In my opinion, I feel like there are very few situations where ghosting is the answer, and unfortunately I don't feel like this is one of those situations. I don't want to rub it in because I understand that you're probably shy and anxious and maybe can't handle conflict or confrontation, but yeah, maybe just sending a text or something, just voicing your concerns and maybe sending an exit text would have been nice, because it's just common courtesy. Even just a, sorry the game's not working out, bye, and then just completely leaving. In my opinion, it's just kind of rude. But OP, I understand where you're coming from, and you know that it wasn't the nicest thing to do. And I don't really need to tell you that maybe don't do this again, because you already seem like you've taken accountability for it. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could text one of the players if you still have their information and just say what you were feeling. That might be a nice thing to do, but only if you want to. But that's so fun that you found a group from one of the big RPG horror story readers platforms. Actually, I saw on my Discord that a couple of you have found other people to play games with, so that's awesome. That is what the Discord can be used for. Go check out my Discord if you want to. Well, I think I'm gonna leave it here for now. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to give me a like and subscribe if you enjoyed and turn on that post notification bell. As well as if you want to support me and the channel, become a YouTube channel member or sign up for my Patreon. There's some fun bonus stuff on there. And speaking of Patreon, I would like to thank my tavern adventurer patron, Mackenzie Louisier or Luzier. I'm so sorry, I am the worst at pronouncing names. It is written in my DNA, I can't do it. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so, so much, Mackenzie. I appreciate you and all the support. And if you would like to become a patron, go check out the links in my description, as well as all my other social medias down there. And nominate me for the Crit Awards if you want to. Well, that's all for now. I will see you in the next one.